Coverage continues with a panel of security specialists, Beryl Wiseman of the Institute for Public Affairs of Montreal, plus CNN terrorism analyst Peter Bergen, and Steve Emerson, the author of American Jihad, The Terrorists Living Among Us. Welcome. Glad to have all three of you as part of our team tonight. Steve, I'm going to get started with you. We just heard in the piece that preceded this how much this guy defied the typical profile of a jihad terrorist. So how much further does this blow apart the assumptions that the intelligence community has to make about who terrorists are. Well, it certainly, as you pointed out, defies the stereotype, but it's still the basic outline of who terrorists uh, mingle with and how they operate still revolves around a religious type of behavior that, that they could certainly critique and has a commonality with other terrorists. The, he clearly did not show that behavior, but uh, he is the exception to the rule, Paula. And Peter, how do you reconcile being a jihadist member and living the way this guy lives? the lifestyle of a playboy with uh, women in a bunch of different cities, a lot of drinking, a lot of carousing. Well, we've seen this, actually, we've seen this story before. One of the lead hijackers in 9-11, Zihad Jara, was an upper-middle-class Lebanese who had a girlfriend. He was drinking. He was socializing with uh, Americans when he was in this country before he did, uh, piloted one of the planes on 9-11. Also, the operational commander of 9-11, a guy by the name of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, uh, was carousing in the Philippines, had sort of a, a Filipino girlfriend. So, you know, while it is unusual, it certainly isn't something that hasn't actually, we, we have seen this occasionally before, this kind of thing, whether it's not, you know, maybe it's sometimes it's cover, but also sometimes maybe, you know, people just want to have it both ways, you know, to enjoy these uh, things at the same time that they're plotting these terrorist attacks. Beryl, we recently learned that uh, Hamoud actually went to college in Canada, so how concerned should Americans watching the show tonight be about what an easy entry point it seems that Canada is for Al-Qaeda? You've hit the, the, the major point. The Americans have to be less concerned today under the Harper administration because they're addressing three important points. Immigration is lax horribly lax and that bothers the vast majority of Arab Muslims living in Canada who are law-abiding and contribute a lot to this country. We take in 300,000 immigrants and refugees a year, three times that of Australia, and we have a three-year backlog before their cases are heard. This government is addressing the problem. They're also addressing two other problems. The lack of field intelligence. CSIS agents simply don't have enough people on the ground to gather intelligence. Though the, what, with what they've done, they've done well, and they've stopped a lot of other plots and aborted a lot of operations. The third issue that's going to be addressed by this administration that was failed to be addressed for 10 years are our port situation. Much attention is always given in the United States and in Canada to airports, to subways. And yet, None is given to ports where only sure. one of a hundred cargo containers are ever checked. And since the federal government in Canada stopped funding port police, that's not going to get better anytime soon. Yeah, none of that barrel too reassuring as we wait for uh, any of those changes to really have impact. Steve, we recently saw the FBI make those arrests in Miami with a conjunction on, uh, of a plot uh, apparently to bomb the Sears Tower. And now we see the arrest of this man in conjunction with his co-conspirators. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be any proof that they were actually ready to carry out this attack. Do you think the feds jumped the gun here? No, I think they couldn't have afford to wait till they took action and they had to jump if they tried to play it out they'd be playing with people's lives look on before 9-11 if people thought that four terrorists uh, commanders with uh, 15 supporters could take over airplanes and plow into buildings and take them down people would have thought they were crazy so I think you have to take them down arrest them before they conspire the conspiracy actually materializes Peter, Paul, the final this, word this, tonight. Yep, carry on this point of Steve's is very, very important because, as all of you have heard, there was the arrest of the 17 young men in, uh, in Toronto, sure. and there was a great debate whether they were really plotting, whether they weren't. Well, they were, and Canadian security authorities for 14 months worked with their families. They went to them to tell them what they were doing, and the families and the communities had no influence on them, all and right. they had to arrest them before they did anything. Peter, you get the final word. Got 10 seconds left just about what the deal is with Al-Qaeda and trains. Um, you know, they tend to try attack the same kinds of targets. Um, you know, they tend to go back to things that have worked in the past. All right. You did that in less than 10 seconds. You get a, a big gold star, Peter Bergen, uh, Steve Emerson, Beryl Wiseman. Glad to have all three of you with us tonight. Thank really you, Paula. Great top story panel tonight. Now we move on.